Namaste. My name is Kirti and on behalf of Himalayan Yoga Association, I welcome you all to this online teacher training course. I am a teacher here at Himalayan Yoga Association and I will be taking you through the concepts and details of the human body and yoga all together. Let's hope you enjoy this course. Let's start. Namaste and welcome back to the online yoga teacher training course. In the previous session, we discussed the anatomy of the ankle joint. In today's video or in this video, we are going to discuss the anatomy of the wrist joint. But before we go ahead and do that, I need you to please come and sit with me as we chant the Gayatri Mantra before beginning today's session. So, adopt any meditative posture, activate chin mudra and lengthen your spine, roll your shoulders to the back, flare the rest of the three fingers away from each other, most importantly, Close the eyes with which you see the outside world and open the eyes through which you see the inside of your mind and your body. Slowly inhale and observe the breath traveling inside you. And slowly exhale and observe the breath moving outside. Allow your breath to calm your senses, to calm your mind and to calm your body's functions as you are. Now after you've gathered all of your awareness and attention after a few breaths, slowly bring your hands in front of your chest, Namaskara Siddhi, join the heart center with the back of your thumbs and let's chant the Gayatri Mantra together. Slowly take a deep inhalation. Now with me. Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Deva Syadhi Mahi Dio Yona Prachodayat Having absorbed the vibration and the effect of the mantra on your mind and your body, let's gently start rubbing our palms. Cover your eyes with your palms. Now transfer this energy to your facial muscles, to the back of the neck and anywhere else you wish to transfer this energy to. Once again, before opening your eyes, fold your palms, bow down to your fingertips and with a few blinks, open your eyes and welcome back. Now, the wrist joint is a very interesting joint because it makes our life much easier. It makes our life very interesting in many ways. The hand is the instrument through which we are able to sense, touch and grab things. Without hands, our lives would be completely different. And it is the wrist joint which facilitates the movements and the possibilities that the hand is capable of. The wrist is located at the end of the forearm and at the beginning of the hand itself. The wrist joint which is capable of abduction, adduction, flexion, extension and the combination of all of these movements known as circumduction in the form of an ellipsoid synovial joint. Now the difference if you remember the previous video about the synovial joints, you'll realize that the ellipsoid joint can do everything that a ball and socket joint can do except for rotations and that is why it is the second best joint inside the human body, the second best synovial joint inside the human body. So any rotation which means the uh, the supination and the pronation of the hand is happening at the elbow end of the arm which is also pivot joint. 
the wrist joint is fixed at, as it is and that is why it does not offer any rotation but the various carpals present right above the radius and the ulna wound they allow for various movements which I just discussed with you. When we discuss the radiocarpal joint then you can easily make out from the name itself radiocarpal which means which comes from the name radius and carpals coming together to form the joint. The ulna bone does not play any role. In fact, it is restricted in the movement of the wrist joint. In fact, it is restricted in participating in the wrist joint because of a fibrocartilaginous cartilaginous disc present right above the distal end of the uh, ulna bone called as the articular disc. This articular disc along with the shape of the radius bone forms a con concave structure of the entire hand and that with the convex structure of the placement of the various lower carpals on the hand, they form in perfectly together and allow us to move as freely as we do. There are three, there actually there are four carpals but when it comes to the entire wrist joint, only three particular carpals of the hand are coming together to form the joint with the radial, with the radius bone. One of them is the scaphoid, which is placed at the side of the, of the thumb, or we can say on the lateral end of the thumb. Right next to it is the lunate carpal. Right next to the scaphoid is the lunate carpal. And after that, there is a triquetral carpal, which is placed on the lateral end of the hand. So scaphoid on the medial end under the thumb, um, lunate right next to it in between and uh, triquetral right next to the lunate bone on the lateral end of the hand. These three bones, these three carpals along with the radius form the wrist joint. How does the hand get its stability is with the help of the various ligaments that form the synovial capsule around the hand. In principle, there are four different ligaments which stabilize the joint, the wrist joint as it is. There is a radiocarpal ligament which is present and starting from the radial bone and it is covering all the carpals of the hand including the trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate and the hamate bone of the carpals and it is if you're looking at the hand in a supinate position, that means you're facing the palm and you're able to see the face, in that case, it becomes the palmar radiocarpal ligament. On the back side, if you're looking at the dorsal or the posterior end of the hand, which means the rear end of the hand, the same ligament becomes a dorsal radiocarpal ligament. There are two other ligaments which help in stabilizing the joint from the sides as well. These collateral ligaments are called as radial uh, collateral ligament and the other one is called as ulnar collateral ligament. If you are aware of the names of these bones then you can make out that the ulnar carpal ligament is connecting the carpals of the side basically the pisiform and the triquetral bone with the ulnar bone while the radial carpal, uh, the radial collateral ligament is joining these ligaments, the trapezium, the scaphoid with the radial bone. Four different ligaments, one on each directions of the wrist of the hand, all with the purpose of forming a synovial capsule, all with the purpose of forming the wrist as it is, as functional as it is, as interesting as it is, as capable as it is. There is a formation of fascia between the metacarpals of the hand starting from the thumb metacarpal and ending up towards the hamate bone of the hand. This fascia is covering the entire palm surface of the hand and there is a very thin hollow space between the palmar radiocarpal ligament and the fascia that space is called as the carpal tunnel which allows for the transportation of various nerves which and tendons inside the hand which is responsible for the instructions and the sensations from the mind 
to the fingers of the hand and the palm as well. This is everything you need to know about the anatomy and the structure of the hand. If we talk about what can you do in yoga to keep your wrist and your hands healthy, then there are certain movements that you can do. There are certain exercises, activities that you can do. Another example of Sukshma Vyam is uh, applied in case of the wrist joint, which is all about circumductions in either directions, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Do this about five to 10 times. Also, something else that you can do to keep your wrist healthy is just hold the elbows straight, elbows not bending at any point, palms, and then one hand you use to flex the hand in this direction. The other, the same hand you do to extend the hand in the other direction. The same thing you do in both sides. Repeat this about five to ten times to maintain healthy ligaments and a healthy radiocarpal joint. I hope you found today's video very informative. I'll see you again next time with another session, another information on another type of skeletal joint. Until then, thank you and namaste.